movement of GHG emissions on board mobile offshore units. Thanks. Um, thank you, Prof Lam, for the uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Chun Wee, uh, Principal Engineer and uh, Project Manager with uh, Classification Society, DNV. Uh, I've been with DNV for the past uh, 11 years, uh, working mainly on the project management and approval of uh, um, uh, mobile offshore units uh, for the local yards and also some overseas yards. So today, on behalf of my colleagues, Zhi uh, Zhao, uh, Rakesh and Khan, I'm going to present our paper, which is on abatement of uh, GHG emissions on board mobile offshore units. I'm going to start this uh, first by an introduction of the, um, uh, the regulatory framework regarding this uh, topic. And then next, we're going to do some uh, uh, introduction of the source of emissions, uh, GHG emissions and abatement measures available. And then next, uh, we're going to look into some of the class notations being offered by various class uh, societies, and in particular, uh, DNV's a bit class notation. Okay, we have seen this graph before. Uh, the International Maritime Organization, IMO, has uh, set these very clear and ambitious goals for decarbonization of shipping industry. Um, so they have introduced uh, uh, regulations like EEDI, the Energy Efficiency Design Index for uh, new builds. And recently, uh, for the existing ships, they have uh, EEXI and also CII. However, they do not cover MOU, which are the mobile offshore units, although they also go through the same uh, regulatory framework, which requires statutory certification and also uh, classification. For mobile offshore units, the responsibility for regulating uh, this kind of emissions uh, from the oil and gas process generally falls on the shelf state on which the mobile offshore unit is uh, operating on. Um, most of them have not really implemented any uh, statutory requirements on uh, this topic on GHG emissions, except some has required uh, uh, some sort of a carbon reporting. So in the absence of a definitive uh, statutory requirements, the job of reducing GHG emissions generally falls back onto the oil and gas companies and the operators themselves. Uh, some have already done so. Uh, operators like uh, BP and Econor, they are basically uh, committing to uh, net zero by 2050. Their motivation for doing this is actually to improve uh, energy efficiency for their MOUs. First of all, is to save uh, the money and also uh, uh, from this carbon, any carbon tax that may come along their way. And also to improve their public image by demonstrating they are adopting green technologies. So, uh, we know recently, uh, um, due to the uh, um, uh, public pleasure, there are some of these oil, uh, offshore oil and gas uh, um, projects offshore Scotland has been stopped because of this. So it, it is their interest to improve their public image. And also finally, this will improve their access to financial capital, uh, who are now increasingly reducing, reducing their exposure to the uh, oil and gas industry. In terms of the classification society's uh, part in this, uh, um, we offer uh, class notations, new class notations, to, uh, which can demonstrate that uh, ship design has attained a certain level of environmental friendliness. Some of these are, for example, ABS, you have an Enviro notation. Uh, Bureau Veritas, you have a clean ship. DNV, we have a clean. And then Lloyd's Register, we have a, a echo. So generally, these are um, these notations, the requirements is built upon the uh, prevailing international regulations and we'll, what they will do is they will add on some specific class requirements onto it. Uh, recently, uh, to support United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, uh, some of the class societies has also um, offered new notations like, uh, for example, BV's uh, Sustainable Ship and also ABS Sustain Notations that was uh, 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 more towards this uh, SDG requirements to show that the, uh, the ship has uh, achieved this. However, all these notations do not address uh, the GHG emissions reduction on board ships and also the MOUs, and also will not lead to their quantifiable uh, reduction. So looking at the analysis of uh, um, oil and gas uh, 
GHG emissions okay, for, uh, from the one sector in UK. Majority of them actually come from uh, CO2, about 90%, followed by uh, next uh, um, by methane, which is about 10%. Most of this is coming mainly from the uh, combustion from, uh, from power generation and also flaring. Whereas for methane, is coming from uh, mainly from venting and flaring and uh, uh, maybe a smaller amount from the fuel combustion. Next, we'll move on to the potential abatement measures. We can basically put them into four different categories. First one is to redu uh, reduce the CO2 emissions. Second is to reduce the methane emissions. Thirdly, is to uh, prevent any CO2 produced from reaching the atmosphere. And the fourth is to reduce the storage tank emissions. So maybe we just look at uh, one of them, reduction of CO2 emissions, right? It can be done via uh, reducing energy demand on board the MOUs, uh, increase the energy efficiency. All right? that can, uh, you can do it by using uh, waste heat uh, recovery systems or combined cycles. And you can also reduce emissions from um, this uh, power generation via the use of hybrid uh, or altern new alternative fuels. And of course, uh, reduce flaring scenarios and reduce flare gas volumes. So seeing this as an opportunity for the offshore oil and gas industry, uh, in July 2021, uh, DNV became the first class society to publish a new rules, uh, abate, which helps to identify, assess and implement measures that can be taken by rig owners okay, to, uh, in their quest for GHG emissions abatement. So um, Altira's infrastructure, they are FESO is the first uh, uh, vessel to be awarded this particular notation. The basic framework of this is uh, based on the uh, management system that specifically address the emission by having a structured identification and assessment of the various abatement measures. This is also supplemented by the various uh, qualifiers, which are optional in nature, that covers the major sources. Um, some of them, the, the five consists of a power plant, all right? you have a carbon capture plant, uh, you have flaring, you could have uh, process vents and also uh, uh, storage vents as well. So looking at this management system, uh, you will be based mainly on the, you'll be based mainly on uh, this ISO 50001, which is uh, the management, energy management system uh, already widely uh, used in the industry as well. Okay, we expect similar kind of uh, um, energy management system being adopted for emissions management as well. So this is mainly based on the plan, do, check, act uh, kind of process that involves uh, uh, management responsibility, going down into the policy making, uh, having the energy planning, uh, having an implementation and operation, and also having a check of the actual uh, emissions level, and having a, a regular review on uh, how, how the uh, rig is doing. And also we, ha we have to do a regular assessment of the best available technology. Um, having a screening and assessment of various measures, okay, um, one of the ways that you can do it is uh, having a marginal abatement cost curve screening of the various uh, green technologies. Uh, you have to come up with some uh, feasibility parameters, things like the, um, uh, safety, okay, reliability, uh, weight and um, uh, dimensions, requirements, has to be identified and assessed uh, together. Okay, the part about uh, this is that this process will have to restart at, uh, every five years as part of the class renewal process. As an example for one of these uh, uh, qualifiers, a bit P, which uh, stands for power plant, which is actually a main, uh, one of the main uh, contributor for GHG emissions. You are supposed to come up with uh, emissions philosophy related to uh, your heat and power generation. Okay, we will look into the energy demand optimization study. Uh, energy efficiency optimization study, okay, the BAT, which is just, uh, the best available technology assessment of energy sources, 
uh, and also the same similar assessment of uh, carbon capture and storage technology, and also implement some procurement emission policy and procedures. So these are the main documentation required. Um, under this, this notation, there are also some uh, more specific uh, uh, requirement, technical requirement uh, that, uh, for example, is uh, having a combined cycle uh, on board the um, MOU. Okay, the same uh, principles applies to other qualifiers. Uh, this is uh, showing for flaring as well. This is for showing the process vent. Okay, this is for the tank storage venting. Okay. So in addition to the traditional uh, classification uh, services, DNV is also able to provide other advisory services. Some of them include uh, low carbon technology advisory and uh, qualification and even uh, 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 coming up with the energy and emission budgets, etc. So in conclusion, uh, we can see there's a gap um, in the regulatory framework for uh, controlling emissions uh, abatement for GHG for mobile offshore units. Okay, we have uh, the a DMV uh, abate notation that is uh, mainly based on the management system to specifically address uh, this em emissions abatement. Okay, via the use of a structured identification and assessment of abatement uh, measures. Okay, we will need to monitor the results uh, and also the potential improvement during the uh, uh, unit's lifetime okay, to make uh, more uh, improvement. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. I will be happy Thank to yeah, take any questions. Thank you for the very interesting presentation. Um, to keep to the time, we can have one small question, short and sh small question. Anyone? All right, we have one question. Uh, no. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you again. Long yes. time. <laughs> I'd like to know what's Okim uh, reaction on that. What's the Okim? You know Okim O C I M F. Okay. Uh, what's your reaction on this new uh, notation uh, your your develop? I I do not have a um uh, that. Uh, information, but uh, why we can say that there's, uh, there are a lot of interested uh, parties, especially from the uh, oil and gas operators. So many of our clients that they are, you know, with the recent developments in the past year, they are more aware of uh, uh, their, their social responsibility. So they have to find some way to showcase how they are uh, in incorporating some of these uh, uh, green technologies okay, to, uh, in, in, in a bit to reduce their GHG uh, emissions footprint. Okay, so they are actually contacting us, trying to find out how they can do this and how um, a third party like us, a classification society, can, uh, can help them to demonstrate this, this uh, particular part. So we, we do have uh, inquiries on that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ngeng. Thank you. Thank you.